In this video we're going to look at convergent and divergent evolution. We're first going to look at a brief overview of natural selection and how that accounts for evolution. Then we're going to look at the difference between convergent and divergent evolution, including some Australian examples. Natural selection is the mechanism that we have to explain evolution. And there's a few steps to this. The first step is that within a population there is genetic variation. And this exists due to sexual reproduction resulting in slightly different genes throughout the population. So no organism is the same as any other organism. Uh, and in this example, I'm going to talk about uh, re chemical resistance. Uh, so you could think of it as, for example, flies resistant to DDT. So there is a uh, natural vari variation within the species. Uh, and some of these flies are a little bit resistant and some are not resistant at all, uh, so are quite susceptible to these chemicals. So the next step in natural selection is that there's competition between the individuals, meaning that not all of them will live to the age where they reach maturity and breed, meaning that they don't pass their genetics on to their offspring and that those more suited to the environment are going to be the ones that survive. And this is where the survival of the fittest comes in. It's probably important to note at this time, fittest doesn't necessarily mean biggest and strongest. Uh, fittest can, is how well they are suited to their environment. Uh, so if they have a particular niche or reproduce in large numbers uh, or are able to have offspring earlier, all of these are really good things to have in survival of the fittest, okay? So not necessarily biggest and strongest. So if we introduce uh, to our environment a particular concentration of chemicals, so as I said, DDT, say we introduce this amount, all of those that are susceptible to that amount are going to die. The only ones that will be left in the population are the ones that have that those few that have that small amount of resistance and therefore can survive that amount of the chemical. So that at first go, the DDT was about 90% effective. So that's good if it's killing 90% of the flies. The problem is that then those organisms that survive pass their genes on to their offspring and their offspring get these favorable characteristics. So what this means is that around based on an average of those ones that are left, which were a little bit stronger than all the ones that died, that new population is going to be about that much stronger. So we, as the numbers go up again, using the same amount of chemical is not going to kill them all. Uh, and this is what we saw with DDT. Um, the first time it was used, it was about 98%, 95% successful. But in subsequent times and over subsequent years, it was not as effective and had to be used in larger and larger concentrations. Okay, so now we'll look at the difference between divergent and convergent evolution. Okay, so divergent evolution, also called adaptive radiation, is when you have a common ancestor and populations of that organism are separated uh, or isolated and therefore evolve or adapt to their environment differently. A good example of this is Darwin's finches on the Galapagos Islands. They all descended from one uh, finch population that would have moved to the Galapagos Islands and then spread out across the different islands. And because of the different food that was available on the different islands, they developed a different beak structure. An Australian example of this would be all the different marsupials that are found around Australia. They would have had one uh, common possum-like ancestor, and now we have a range of marsupials ranging from the carnivorous Tasmanian devil to the herbivorous bandicoot. Uh, and the modern possum, which probably is still fulfilling the niche that that common ancestor filled. Okay, convergent evolution is the opposite. So this is where there is not a common ancestor, there are different ancestors. However, because the environments are the same, uh, the evolution occurs so that these common characteristics come across the different species. 
Now, an example of this would be sharks and dolphins. Both have a stream-like body, both have fins uh, or flippers, as well as a fin on top. Uh, the difference is that a shark is a cartilaginous fish, while a dolphin is a mammal. So these two animals had no common ancestor, very, very different evolution, uh, but they evolved to look very similar. An Australian example of this would be the marsupial wombat that we have in Australia, being very, very similar to the placental groundhog that's found in North America. So these are both burrowing animals uh, that forage on the ground and are herbivorous, and through convergent evolution, despite not having an an a common ancestor, uh, because of their similar lifestyles and taking up a similar niche within the environment, uh, they have evolved to at least look fairly similar. In this video, we've looked at natural selection being the process by which evolution occurs. We've looked at divergent evolution, where isolated populations of an organism evolve to have different characteristics. And we've looked at convergent evolution, where different organisms that live in the same environment evolve to have similar characteristics.